When I first put up the circle cutting jig, I said I wasn't going to do a video on a cajon, but uh, I've made quite a few improvements. In fact, I've nicked all the good features of all the other ones I've seen on YouTube. You can get it all out of a 4x2 piece of Baltic birch. The feature I like best is moving the adjustment knob inside and getting rid of the elastic. Cutting large sheets is always a problem. Doesn't matter how careful I am with the circular saw, it's never a perfectly straight or right cut. You shouldn't use a rip fence on a piece that's wider than it is long. The problem is too much chance of yawing and pinching the blade. I do have a half sled for large pieces, but it does mean that half, unlike a full sled, half the work piece is overhanging and when the blade gets to the end there's a risk of breakage and I don't have any excess in this piece of wood. I really need all of it bar about a couple of millimeters so I can't afford breakout at the end there. The other problem is I want to cut everything exactly to the same 30 centimeters and that means I want to fit that to 30 and leave it there. Even if I was to put the half sled in and put something under this side to help prevent breakout at the end at the end here when we get to the end, I would still want to have the rip fence here and you mustn't. You mustn't be pushing on a sled here whilst you also have the rip fence here because of again the chance of causing the workpiece to catch over here and yaw around and grab the blade. The plan is then to cut it in the middle first. There's going to be four strips. One strip is going to be the top and the bottom, and that's the one that'll take nearly the entire width of this piece of Baltic birch. And then the others are the two sides and the back. The front is much thinner, it's three mil ply, the bit you hit, the tapper. And uh, if I do my calculations correctly, I should be able to give myself a few millimeters either side of this line in the middle. So I've got to add up this, a kerf, and this, and make sure there's enough room for that, a kerf and that, and try and get my first cut between the two. Then that'll give me the opportunity to bring the rip fence in and set it to 30 and do everything properly at the 30 centimeters I want. Those are the three that need to be cut to a width of 30 centimetres. The last piece is shorter by two rebates. Now I'm not going to cut this last one, the 28.1 for the back sitting inside its two rebates. There's two reasons for that. First of all, I want to get the size again once everything is assembled and the two rebates have been cut, or rabbits. Uh, also, the top and the bottom are square. Because I don't want to move the rip fence to get the square 30 centimetre top and bottom, I'm going to break the rules and I am going to run this against the rip fence, but it's a much smaller piece of wood and hopefully everything will be all right. The next thing is to put some rebates in. The tops will be rebated and will drop into the sides. The back of the sides and the back of the tops, if you see what I mean, will be rebated and the back panel will fit into that. It's nice and easy to find the centre of good quality ply, just count up the plies and I have set the height of the table saw blade to the centre ply. I wasn't sure that going to the centre of the centre ply was a good idea but it seems to have worked out okay. I've made this test cut one little nibble at a time. I started with the rip fence right up against the blade, well except not really, I put a sacrificial fence in there and then I worked the rip fence this way until I got a good fit here. Then I've locked the rip fence off at that setting and I'm going to run every piece through and make that innermost cut on them all. And then when I've done that I'll start moving the rip fence back again toward the blade nibbling out the rest of the rebates here or rabbits. Why not, I hear you ask, put a dado stack in there? Well European manufacturers and suppliers of table saws are wusses. They don't put enough of an arbor on the motor to take a dado stack. Contrary to popular belief, there's no health and safety regulation that says you can't have a dado stack on a table saw. 
even as a hobbyist. Uh, they just don't do it. Why not put two blades one next to each other? Because the arbor would be big enough for that. Well, that's very, very dangerous. If one blade slips and chips a carbide tip off the other blade, then that carbide tip is going to go flying somewhere, probably toward you, at a very high rate of knots. Very, very nasty. Why not route out the rebate? Well, I'm not very good at routing rebates, even in a simple piece of wood where I've only got to assess one grain for direction and orientation. Routing out a rebate in plywood is really difficult. I find it is impossible with the alternating grain directions. So, one nibble at a time it is. These are handy, assorted shims. Builders use them. They're not easy to get, but if you can find one at a builder's merchant, very handy pack to have. These are the, uh, not quite the thinnest, but the next thinnest, and uh, two of them together are two millimetres or just over. So I'm going to use these. I'm not going to remove the rip fence. I'm going to use these to uh, adjust the cut each time, and I'm going to push it through on this bevel gauge. That worked fairly well on the small top and bottom. It's not going to work, however, on the longer sides. So I'm going to have to move the rip fence in a little each time. I've made the first cut here using a sacrificial fence. I've set up a stop on the other side of the fence here. and I'm going to add my pairs of shims one at a time as I move the rip fence in until it meets that first cut there. I've finished cutting the rebates and I've done a dry fit. I particularly wanted to know the distance from here to here and amazingly it turns out to be just what was on the plans. So I've trimmed the rear panel to fit into there. Now before I glue it all up together there's a few other things left to do. There's some little cutaways to make here about one or two millimeters so that when the tapper is on there's a snap when you hit in that corner like a rim shot. Then there's the adjustable snare. I've attached two halves of a snare drum snare to a dowel, as is uh, usual in these things. Then I need to make a blind hole here into which that will fit. And I need to make a saddle here into which that will slide. And then I need to make the quadrant here, which will allow for adjustment of the angle of that. I may put a bar with some felt up here so that when the snare is rotated out of the way it bears on the felt and doesn't rattle. And finally, both for the bass sound and to enable me to reach in and get the adjuster knob here, there will be a bass port at the back there. Now somewhat irritatingly, this dowel here turns out not to be the 22mm I thought it was. Instead it turns out to be 7 eighths of an inch. And whereas I have a nice 22mm Forstner bit, I don't have a 23mm Forstner bit, nor do I have a 7 eighths of an inch Forstner bit. So I'm going to have to find some way of just turning down 
the ends of this. Well, it turns out that it's close enough that just a little bit of this is enough. I'm just marking up the adjustment quadrant. One small but important detail when doing this kind of thing is the order in which you make the holes or pricks and holes. Uh, the dowel is 11 millimeters radius. I would like another five millimeters uh, outside of that at this small end of the quadrant. So I've set the compass here to 11 plus 5, 16 millimeters and I'm just drawing a circle here at the small end and the important part is here where I'm just going to round off this corner it's an extremely hard pencil in this compass I can just about see that line but I don't suppose you can then having made that little hole here I'm going to use that to locate the point of a brad point drill bit and make a four millimeter hole there that will be to take the pivot pin of the circle cutting jig with which I will make a slot out here for the adjustment knob and then outside of that I'll make a complete cut for the large end of the quadrant. Then into that 4mm hole there I'll locate the point of a force in a bit and I'll drill out the 22mm diameter hole for the snare dowel. And I think 90 degrees is excessive. I won't want that much adjustment, nowhere near it really. So I've set this to 15 degrees. I'll just take that off the edges there. Uh, 15 degrees off that side and 15 degrees off that side. Don't want that too tight as it's gonna be a pivot. I've put the router in the circle cutting jig. I'll put a link to the uh, video about making this thing in the description below. I've set the distance from the pivot to the cutter to be the 19 centimeters that I want. I put a quarter inch cutter in here. The star knob that the adjustment lock will be done with has a six millimeter bolt on it quarter of an inch is 6.35 so that will give a nice clearance in the slot. I just realized the other day, I'm amazed it's taken me so long, uh, if anyone's a computer person or any other profession that involves you with powers of two, it's uh, quite easy to remember uh, the metric equivalent of these things. <coughs> Half an inch is 12.7 or 127 tenths of a millimetre and that's very nearly 128. If you halve that, you get to 64, which is very nearly the 6.35 of a quarter inch, and you can carry on doing that. If you halve again, you get uh, 32 or 3.2 millimeters for an eighth of an inch, and then you get to 16 or 1.6, the equivalent of a sixteenth of an inch, and there you've got a one and a six, and that makes it all a bit easier to remember. Anyway, that's going to be the clearance slot. <coughs> I've set the depth on the turret as usual. I've set this one here to be the full depth and then this one here gives me a half plunge to start it off with. I've put the dog on the vise up to be the moving dog. I never did get around to drilling any dog holes in the workbench but uh, I've got those two bits of wood up against the wall there so I can hold the workpiece steady on the vise as I route the slot. Just remove these stops and uh, reset the radius to 22 and cut a bigger sector, is that? A bigger piece of the circumference out here 
to form the back edge, the back large edge of the quadrant. just checking that this slot here really is on the circumference of the circle whose center is over here. I'm just making a mark at uh, various points along its length and they do all seem to be in the same place. Yeah, good. So I need to drill that out and put an insert in there. The kind of threaded insert I'm going to use to accept the locking knob is this kind here. It's actually a security stop for a sliding sash window. The good thing about it is that in addition to the 6mm thread for most of the inside, there's a little bit of hex grabbable at the top which makes inserting these nice and easy. They also have a very thin top. Using a T-nut's a bit of a pain because of the prongs, trying to get a T-nut flush is uh, always a bit more challenging than it needs to be so I'm going to use one of these. The other kind of threaded insert that isn't a T-nut doesn't, well the ones I have anyway, doesn't have uh, an Allen grabbable top to it, Allen key grabbable top to it. Uh, it has a slot here which you might think was for trying to insert it with a uh, a screwdriver but no it isn't for that, that's for clearing chips as you go down. What you're supposed to do to insert these is get a length of the threaded rod Put a couple of nuts on and lock them together and then use that to insert the uh, the thread. But uh, that's more complicated than necessary. Don't need huge amounts of force available here. So this self-cutting coarse thread insert here is what I'll use. Next, I'm going to glue a couple of blocks either side and to those blocks I'm going to screw this bar here and on the front of this bar there will be a strip of felt. This is piano dampening felt and then that felt covered bar will go behind here and serve to stop the wires when they're in the resting position from doing this battling business that they currently do. Now why not attach the bar directly to the sides? Well, I can see myself changing my mind about where these snare wires go and moving them onto the back of the rod here and then they'll present themselves to the tapper at more of an angle and they'll also present themselves to the damping bar at more of an angle. So if I have the blocks glued to the sides and this screwed to the blocks, then later on if I want I can change my mind about the angle at which this presents itself to the snare wires. The next job is to cut the circle out the base port, the reach your hand through and adjust the snare mechanism port. And as I mentioned in the follow-up to the original circle cutting jig video, and I'll put a link down below, you need to find a way to anchor the centerpiece, otherwise if you're pivoting in it, when you've finished cutting, it will move. This time what I'm going to do is put a spot of hot melt glue around here. Pop the sacrificial baseboard onto there and then I can clamp the whole thing and run the circle cutting jig from the other side.
Cutting the base port just about completes it. I have a few things left to do. This screw isn't in yet because gluing up might adjust this dimension here. When I'm happy with the adjustment range, I'm also going to set this screw in here. Well, I can't even think of a way to do both this joint and this joint at the same time. So starting off, just doing this lower joint down here. So I've used, I haven't got that many clamps or cramps. I'm never quite sure. I think these are cramps. So uh, I've put some sash clamps or cramps to hold all the dry joints in place. It doesn't appear to shear too badly, so that should slide in there with the glue down here. And then I've got a few clamps and I've just been planning as one really needs to where they're all going to go. And I need to hold down onto those joints. So I've got some short clamps ready for that. And then I need to hold back into that joint because there's a rebate behind there. And I've got some long clamps to come in from here. So planning your clamping, good idea. I'm going to make a cutaway over here, back to about a millimeter, maybe two, and the idea will be that the tapper, when you hit it up there, will slap in against the recess and make more of a snappy noise, like a rim shot. I may do it to both corners, but for the moment I'll start off doing it over there. Now I've used that measurement against the table saw blade to set the table saw blade height and I'm going to make the cut using a spline jig. glue is dried. I didn't use any screws or pins or dowels or dominoes. It's actually strong enough to sit on without uh, any glue, let alone screws and nails, as long as you don't rock from side to side. And when the tapper's actually screwed on here, which is not glued, it is screwed, then it almost doesn't even need any glue, but it certainly doesn't need pins or screws, etc. Now that this dimension is fixed by the glue, I need to just pop this screw in the other side of the damper bar. And I've set the adjustment at the back there to give me one more inch, as it were, of freedom to swing this even harder against the damper. But that should be enough and I'll just pop a registration screw in here. Just to hold that where I want it. Holding onto the quadrant through that base port in the back was proving to be a little bit troublesome, so I've just popped on here a couple of little grab handles made out of a piece of jointing dowel, cut in half and flattened at the back. A little right angle like this is a good way to make sure you're drilling vertically and to give yourself a stop. The 
tightness that you put on these screws affects a couple of things. The looser it is, the rackier the sand, but the tighter it is, the better the base. I don't want to use the power driver on these because I don't want to mar the black finish of the screw. So I'm in for quite a bit of wrist ache here and several breaks. Here it is with the snare. And without. It was a lot prettier without the front here. I wonder if I could get rid of the three mil ply and put some perspex in here. Oh, the wind whistles down. 